Hello, I'm Lloyd Russell, the Chief Examiner of A-Level Music Technology. Welcome to this presentation designed for teachers considering starting A-Level Music Technology. This course could also be useful as a refresher for current teachers to reinforce their understanding of the course requirements. Why choose A-Level Music Technology? Students, as I've taught, consider music technology their main subject and their raison d'etre. The course is for students that are enthusiastic about contemporary music and how it's recorded and produced. When teaching this course, the practical work of recording and composing should be the emphasis to engage the student's interest. Through the practical work, the theory will seem more relevant to students, so learning happens on a deeper level. Students will also study how music technology has changed over time and how it has influenced music styles. Pearson is the only exam board to offer A-level music technology. Music theory is not assessed. Theory of sound and music production is the focus. There is a practical exam where the students complete a mix during the exam. A-level music technology is an excellent course that encourages students to pay attention to detail to achieve high production value in their music. The course focuses on practical work underpinned with academic theory, so prepare students for the workplace or further study at university. A-level is externally assessed. There are four units. There are two practical non-examined assessments and two exams. NEA, or non-examined assessment, is the assessment that is not a traditional exam. For music technology, NEA are coursework tasks. The NEA and exams are all completed in the second year of study. Unit 1 is the recording task where students record a song played by real instruments. This NEA is worth 20% of the total mark. For Unit 2, students create a composition where the use of music technology is central. This NEA is worth 20% of the total mark. Unit 3 is a written exam in which students answer questions about recordings that they listen to during the exam. This exam is worth 25% of the total mark. Unit 4 is a written and practical exam. Students are given multi-track files that are the basis of written questions and practical tasks leading to a complete mix. This exam is worth 35% of the total mark. We'll now look at each unit in turn in more detail. Unit 1 is the recording task where students record a song with real instruments using microphones and DI. This is an NEA task which has a total mark of 60. It forms 20% of the qualification. The candidate would normally record instruments being played by other performers. The candidate is not expected to be able to play all of the instruments and record themselves performing. It is the sound quality and music production skills that are assessed. The performance is not assessed, however the performance must be good enough for a viable recording. When I'm teaching, I encourage the students to perform on each other's recordings so that all of the work comes from the students and so they take ownership of their productions and work as a community providing performances for each other. As well as teaching them the skills of music production required for the assessment, performing for each other teaches them the important skills to perform in a studio environment. I find that students really enjoy performing on each other's recordings. When teaching, I would only use a teacher to perform a part as a last resort. Each student makes one recording chosen from a list of 10 artists provided by Pearson. The artist list is released on the 1st of June at the end of the first year of study. This is to allow time for students to choose a song that they'd like to record and give musicians the chance to learn the parts over the summer holidays before recording begins in the second year of study. The artists cover a variety of styles suitable for multi-track recording. The variety of styles should cater for broad student tastes. The recording will be between three and three and a half minutes long. The song may need to be arranged to be the required length. The student completes a logbook illustrating capture and processing. Like with any exam, students should have practice recording various smaller ensembles to prepare themselves for this NEA task. As with any assessment, students must not share or collaborate on any assessed work. For a recording task, this would include not sharing microphone setups multi-track recordings, plugging settings, project templates or photographs for logbooks. The candidate must be in sole charge of the recording process from capture of audio to mix down. The instrument requirements for the recording are specified to ensure that students record an ensemble appropriate for A-level and to ensure that recordings from different students and different schools are of a comparable level. 
The instrument requirements can be seen in the table on this slide. It is required that there are at least seven instrumental parts. The compulsory instruments must all be included playing for a minimum of two minutes. These are drums, bass, electric guitar, lead vocal and backing vocal. For these instruments, two minutes would be easy to fill because the instruments would normally play throughout a normal song arrangement. However, teachers often ask about two minutes of backing vocals. This could be achieved with harmony in the choruses and possibly a harmony in the second verse. Two further instruments must be recorded for at least one minute. These would be two of either an acoustic melody instrument, an acoustic guitar or a keyboard. A melody instrument would be something like a saxophone solo. The playing time is about a minute, so there could be a solo in the middle eight, then continue into the final choruses, which would fill the one minute requirement easily. Keyboard instruments may be sequenced. There is no requirement to recreate the original recording. The song is defined as the words, melody and chords. The song can be arranged in any style. The song would need to be arranged for the performers available and to fulfill the instrumental requirements. Additional unpitched percussion must not be included in the mix. Sometimes candidates are too ambitious and take on too many instruments for A-level, leading to less successful outcomes. It's better to do a simple recording well than a complex recording badly. The requirements in the question paper are aimed at A-level standard. Also be aware that mic instruments need to be assessed, so must be heard clearly in the mix, so don't swamp them with synth strings or too many other instruments. The logbook is not worth any marks, but it is required so the examiner can fully credit work that the student has done. If students do not complete the logbook, their work may not be fully credited. The logbook is particularly useful for examiners if an element of the mix is not clearly audible in the final mix. The logbook contains information about the song so that the examiner can check that it fulfills the song requirements. The students must show how long each instrument plays for so the examiner can check whether the recording meets the requirements of the instrumental parts. To help the examiner assess capture, written and photographic information is given by the student to support their recording. With processing, students complete a table showing their plug-in settings. The teacher and candidate must sign the logbook to certify that the recording is the candidate's unaided work. This slide shows the marking criteria for the recording. As you can see, the performance is not assessed. Assessment Grid 1 assesses how well the student has captured instrumental parts using microphones and DI. Assessment Grid 2 assesses how well the student has EQ'd the parts. Examiners consider the clarity of the parts and how well they fit together in the mix. Assessment Grid 3 assesses the dynamics. This would mostly be the success of dynamic processing. In particular, students often find it hard to control a wide dynamic vocal range so that it sits well with the narrow dynamic range of the electric guitars. The management of dynamic contrast is also assessed here. Assessment Grid 4 assesses the use of effects. This would be effects processing like reverb, delay and distortion effects. Also, the control of natural ambience is assessed here, which is a particular area of interest for the drums. Assessment Grid 5 assesses the balance between the instrumental parts and whether all the parts can be heard clearly. Assessment Grid 6 assesses the use of stereo. Assessment Grid 7 is used to assess the overall presentation of the final mix. The presence of noise and distortion is assessed here too. The total mark is 60. For Unit 2, students compose a piece of music using music technology. This is weighted the same as the recording with a total mark of 60, so it forms 20% of the qualification. Unlike the recording, candidates work on their compositions less collaboratively. However, students can ask their peers to perform in their composition. The most common peer performance would be vocals. I know that a lot of students that I teach feel their singing isn't up to scratch. The composition is where the candidate gets to express themselves most freely. Compositions can be in any style as long as music technology is central to the composition. Some students find it hard to come up with ideas for a composition, so it's worth teaching some smaller composition tasks with a lot of scaffolding before they undertake the coursework composition. When I teach, we study a piece of music that uses a particular composition technique, then the students compose something using that technique. This would give them the building blocks before starting on their coursework composition. Each student creates one composition from a brief chosen from three published by Pearson. 
The briefs are released on the 1st of September at the start of the second year of study. The composition must be three minutes long. Music technology must be central to the composition. In particular, synthesis, sampling and creative effects must be exploited creatively. Music elements such as melody, harmony and rhythm are also assessed. Students must produce a stereo recording of the composition that pays attention to all aspects of the production including capture, balance, blend, EQ, dynamics, stereo field and effects. The student completes a logbook illustrating the use of music technology in the composition. As with any assessment, students must not share or collaborate on any assessed work. For a composition task, this would include not sharing musical ideas, multi-track recordings, plug-in settings or project templates. The composition briefs change every year and are published on the 1st of September at the start of the second year of study. Students have a choice of three briefs. When I teach, I get the students to explore each of the three briefs for a week or so before deciding for sure which brief they will go with because it's an important decision. The students could be working on this composition for months. For brief one, a three minute silent video is published by Pearson. The student must compose music that reflects the actions, emotion and pace of the film and be timed to accurately sync with the scenes and images. For brief two, a poem is given that the students need to create a composition around. The meaning of the text must be reflected in the music. The composition may take the form of a song or music using audio samples created from recorded extracts of the text. The words may be adapted or reordered. For brief three, students create a composition that makes use of a minimum of six samples based on the theme specified by the brief. Recent examples of the theme include polar ice caps and 20th century computer technology. Similarly to the recording, the composition logbook is not worth any marks, but it is required so the examiner can fully credit the student's work. The brief and title are important so that the examiner knows for sure which brief has been chosen so that response to briefs can be assessed. The composition logbook is a chance for the students to draw attention to their creative use of music technology. Students should explain how they've creatively used synthesis, sampling and effects processing. Students must credit any performers used for their composition and include details about their compositional input. For example, did the student write the guitar solo or did the guitarist improvise it? The teacher and candidate must sign the logbook to certify that the composition is the candidate's unaided work. This slide shows the marking criteria for the composition. The first four criteria in yellow are for the use of technology. Assessment grids one to three assess how well the student has creatively used synthesis, sampling and effects. It is the musical quality of the techniques that gains credit rather than the quantity. Sometimes students fall into the trap of just using as many techniques as possible, yielding an unmusical and jumbled composition. Assessment Grid 4 assesses the overall production value of the mix. Musical processing that enhances the mix would be credited here. The remaining criteria are assessing musical elements. However, technology could have an influence. For example, effects could create textural interest. Assessment Grid 5 assesses how the student has reflected the requirements of the brief. Assessment Grid 6 assesses the use of stylistic conventions and the flow of the music. Assessment Grid 7 to 11 assess melody, harmony, rhythm, texture and structure. The examiner will assess all criteria, but only the three highest marks will be used to calculate the total. This is to allow for compositions where some musical elements aren't significant features of the style. For example, grime may not always have complex harmony. The mark total is 60. Unit 3 is a written exam. It is 1 hour and 30 minutes long. The exam is 75 marks. The exam is worth 25% of the qualification. In the exam, each candidate will receive an exam paper and 7 audio files that they haven't heard before. Candidates can listen to the recordings as many times as they wish and shuttle back and forth as required. Candidates will require a computer with media player software and headphones. This paper comprises of two sections. All questions are compulsory. Questions are about the use of music technology in the recordings. In section A, there are four questions worth 10 marks each. Each question is based on one recording and consists of several short answer questions ranging from one mark multiple choice questions to six mark written questions. Questions in past papers ask about production features of the songs. 
For example, candidates could be asked to describe the use of filtering on the synthesizer. Section B consists of two essay questions. Question 5 is a comparison question where candidates compare two unfamiliar commercial recordings. For example, in a recent exam, candidates were asked to compare the production features of the original Pink Floyd version of Comfortably Numb with the cover version by the Scissor Sisters. Question 6 focuses on a production feature of the recording and its wider musical context. For example, in a recent exam, candidates were asked to evaluate the use of distortion in Glory Box by Portishead. Although Section B is presented as essay questions, candidates need not write in continuous prose. Sometimes tables, diagrams or bullet points may be more appropriate to convey the same information more concisely. When teaching, I usually spend one lesson a week setting a test using past paper questions to stimulate class discussion about music that uses a range of technologies. Students enjoy the choice of music and find the range of music inspiring. I always expand the original questions to put the music in historical context, creating links between the music already studied. Past papers can be found on the Pearson website. The styles that the audio recordings could be are shown on this slide. Music used in the exam will be drawn from a multitude of recordings ranging from current digital technologies back to the mono-analogue recording technologies of the 1930s. Pearson defined the music technology eras as shown on this slide. Most eras would be covered in any given exam. Unit 4 is a practical exam with some written work. It is 2 hours and 15 minutes long. The exam is 105 marks. The exam is worth 35% of the qualification. The exam is a mixture of written answers and practical work using a door. This paper comprises of two sections, A and B. All questions are compulsory. In section A, candidates will process the audio and MIDI files to produce corrected stems and a finished mix. Examples of the types of practical tasks in past papers range from removing noise and spill through to creating backing vocal parts by retuning the lead vocal. Section B is one essay focusing on a specific mixing scenario, signal path, effect or music technology hardware unit. In an example from a recent exam paper, students needed to evaluate the suitability of settings on a bass guitar pedal board. Similarly to Unit 3, although Section B is presented as an essay question, candidates need not write in continuous prose. Sometimes tables, diagrams or bullet points may be more appropriate to convey the same information more concisely. Unit 4 focuses the learning from the recording and composition units, so students should be well equipped to complete Unit 4 from their theory and experience from the coursework. When teaching, I tackle the exam preparation after all the NEA components have been completed. As a class, we look at the theory of music technology more precisely. My students will complete many past papers towards the end of the course to prepare them for the unique challenge of this practical exam. I'll adapt these past papers, providing more scaffolding for the first few, or I'll adapt them to focus on topics that my students may have found particularly challenging. I find that students enjoy this exam with the challenges of the practical problem solving. Past papers can be found on the Pearson website. This slide shows an overview of the type of equipment that your school or college would need to run the course. Fuller details of the equipment requirements for each unit can be found in the Administrative Support Guide available on the Pearson website. Unit 1 is the most resource intensive. You'll need a recording environment and equipment as described on this slide. The composition coursework and the Unit 4 practical exam will require a computer suite with computers running a digital audio workstation. The listening exam, Unit 3, requires a computer suite with audio playing software. In a school or college, it is better to have multiple smaller recording spaces rather than one big all singing and dancing studio so that when teaching a large class, students can go to different spaces to make their recordings. This is especially true these days when a whole recording studio fits in a computer. Pearson provides support for teachers. There are a huge amount of teaching resources on the website. The starting point of running music technology would be to read the specification. This is essentially a more detailed version of the training you are watching now. 
In particular, there are tables that show the content of what should be taught. There are sample assessment materials which give one example exam paper for each unit along with the mark scheme. There are past papers dating back to 2019 for the current specification which can be used for mock exams or practice tests. There are pre-2019 examples of exams with mark schemes from the previous specification. Although some of the content is different, teachers can adapt these pre-2019 exam questions to make them a valuable teaching resource. There are examples of schemes of work which would be a good starting point to understand how you might deliver the course. However, you might want to organise your teaching differently to suit your school or college and your personal style. For example, the Pearson schemes of work show that the NEA components are taught concurrently with two running side by side. I personally find that in my college the students work better when completing one task at a time so when I teach I complete the recording task first before Christmas then move on to the composition after Christmas. The exemplar material is a pack of work by actual students accompanied by a description of why the student received the marks that they did. There are also frequently asked questions in this pack. The administrative support guide describes in detail the requirements of each unit and how the work should be submitted. Teachers can sign up for alerts. This could include alerts to when the coursework briefs are available or any changes in how work is to be submitted. For example, in 2022, work was submitted online for the first time instead of by post. Ask the Expert is a service where you can ask questions to the Pearson Subject Advisor if you're unsure about any aspect of the qualification or need any advice. The Subject Advisor's email contact is on this slide. The subject advisor may forward some questions to me for more detailed answers. Results Plus is our online results analysis tool for teachers which gives you a detailed breakdown of your student's performance in exams. You can see actual scores for each exam question for a student, class or group to help you identify potential topics, skills and types of questions where students may need to develop their learning further. Thanks for attending this training. I hope you enjoy running the course as much as I do.